coming on from the tree and ah. Saturday night. With the theme song, Melancholy Lullaby, we welcome you once again to another session of Tree Announce Time. Coming to you from really the spot to go on the West Coast for your dining and dancing pleasure, the beautiful Tree Announce Ballroom in the heart of Southgate, California. That's featuring right. Featuring the very fine rhythms of Benny Carter and his orchestra. Everybody welcome Benny Carter. Here he is. So. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, good to have you here. In my little, my little closet area. Studio B. Some people don't want me to call it a studio because it's not technically one. Yes, it is. You're not technically valid in your opinion. All right, so we're going to be live tonight for about an hour. Just about an hour. Just got back from um, a little bit of dinner. And, uh, and yeah, so back in the saddle over here at home. And what I wanted to do was just talk a little bit about, you know, uh, we had a little bit more left over, I think, from the old school social media. We had talked about putting out palm branches on the beach over there in, in I don't know, a desert island. I wanted to know whether or not you guys and gals had ever either sent or received a message via message in a bottle. Um, we were talking about a few other things. There was CB radio came up last night. We were talking about these hotlines. I'm going to get around to that again there, too. And I thought that would be nice just to take calls, and it'll be open lines, and you guys can just be on topic or off topic. And uh, as long as you get to the point, then let's just have some fun. And then, of course, the uh, the Middle East. <laughs> then that happens. How are you going to ignore that? How's anybody going to ignore that? So, you know, d d despite knowing that nothing is as it seems what's being presented to us is some pretty serious shit it really is here's from daily mail of course the the I, I went to go peek in i haven't been on the drudge report in weeks i went to go peek in on the drudge report and it was just like you know how they have that that uh red alert kind of font just the red the red font all over the place well it is a wash in blood the whole front page. Take a look at this. First ever direct attack. Iran state media says Israel attack dealt heavy blows to air base. So, so there, there's so much here uh, that's going on. I don't know if there's a counterattack, a counter that's happening. Here's one. This was from eight o'clock. Again, this is three hours later. I've been at I've been to dinner, so you guys can uh, call in and, and update me if you'd like. The IDF is planning a significant response against Iran as explosions ring out all across Israel. And that was supposed to, you know, and then you read this before I went to dinner around 637. This was uh, starting to get around. Iran's mission to the UN says that the Iranian missile and drone attacks against uh, Israel were in response to the strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus and adds that the matter can be concluded. It's all done with now. I said, oh, okay, well, then we can we can bring our tomato plants back out then. The doom is off, right? Well, how the hell can the doom be off? This is too much. This is too... And it ties into everything else here, too. Remember, um, I, really, I really did think that among countless other things that could be going on and could be served up to us over the course of the next few months alone... It seems to me that it would be pretty handy to have a major, major military uh, entanglement on the books already active by the time that November rolls around. Because then if it's a change of management and somehow Donald Trump wins, then he's going to be completely uh, swamped 
with managing a, 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 a huge transformative world, transformative war. Because remember, the, the Axis powers have been built up for us for a long time now. They're building up the Axis powers. You know that there is no, it, this, is, this is not mutually exclusive from what's going on in Eastern Europe because, uh, you know, Iran and, and Russia are, are so friendly. So it's just draw a line, connect to all the points you'd like. That's just, uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty more to to, uh, to update everybody on on Monday night. So you can call in with any kind of inside information you have, any kind of prediction or, you know, what are predictions? Can we go put some money on it to bet? I don't know how it's going to turn out, but obviously this is not a good situation. And um, I think it's an escalation that we all, many of us at least, saw to be, uh, it, it's got to come. At some point. So is this it? Very well could be. At least a nice big fat stepping stone. And it's a, it's a fat one too. So 914-200-0269. Oh, no, that's, a, that's a special hotline. We don't need that tonight. 914-200-0269. We're doing calls for an hour. I'll, you know, around We'll take a little bit of a break around half hour. We're staying live across all platforms, the entire thing. We'll stay live for about an hour. So just call in. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you've seen. A hot take you got. Whatever the hell it is. Iran attacks Israel. Explosions light up the sky. IDF on full alert. U.S. is supporting. As if. Mideast airspace closed. 99% of drones and missiles intercepted. It's just crazy there too because of course there was this the, the warning that was given. Like Iran warned, like it was just like a a warning that was given, and then it's drones and all this stuff that's easily shot down. It it it's all listen, nothing is as it seems, and it all just seems really shitty. But the thing is that uh, at the end of it, regardless of who's holding the strings, we we are. Uh, this is all meant to put pressure on the world, and we are in that world, pressure to change in one way or another. That's um, that's it. Okay, so you can call in on whatever the hell you want with that. Calls are already, already rolling in. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. And I'm also just going to reintroduce this to you. Now, this is what I brought up. My friend Star sent this to me uh, after we spoke a couple of weeks ago. Here, this is something called a pipeline on telephone in the 1970s. It's the 1970s social media. All right, this is a thread that was started in 2019. Does anyone remember or even know what Pipeline was? Really briefly, I'll try to explain. Back in the early 70s, you can use your home phone number to meet people by simply yelling your phone number in between recorded phone company messages. It was a sort of a social media thing. In the 1970s, the entire Southeast Michigan area was 313. The area code was 313. So all one had to do was dial 1313 and a looped recording would play and then pause for about 10 seconds. And everyone that was on the phone at that time would yell out their telephone number. You or anybody that heard a phone number of a person they wanted to meet, they would simply call them. When I was a teenager, that was the coolest thing to meet girls and set up dates. If you Google Detroit uh, Pipeline a Telephone, you can find more about this. It indeed was social media of the 1970s. So I, uh, I'm letting you guys and gals tell me all the nifty ways that people would meet each other through uh, any kind of technology that might seem primitive to us now, okay? Adventures with beepers. Um, as I, I have a thread over here that we can get to finally, people who have actually dialed numbers written on bathroom walls. Fun with CB radios. We did a couple of those the other night. Message in a bottles. It doesn't matter. Whatever the hell it is, call in 914-200-0269. Just do it. Just do it. Take advantage. Why the hell not? Okay. So first thing up is a uh, a, a story from the bathroom wall. Nah, what the hell with that? We'll do that in just a second. Let's take a call from four zero five. What is going on? Four zero five. You're on the air. Hello. Oh no. Not listening. 204, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello? 
Hello. Hello, you hear me? Do you hear me? Hello. Okay, this got to be oh. hold on, hold on a second. Let me just check some, check something really quick. This should not be the the issue. The audio is set up with Okay, good. It's not me. So we had two duds. Let's see here. 914 200 0269. Let's try again. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on? Hello. Uh, do you hear Hello. me? Do you hear me? Hello. Do you hear me? Hello. Okay. No, they don't. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Maybe something is wrong. I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably Israel and uh, and Iran. It's all coming down to the same damn thing. All right. So 914 200. Does anyone want to call up to test the phones? Call up to test the phones. That what I would. That's what I would like. Here you go. First one up is people who have dialed numbers written on bathroom walls from yoshi1226 when i was younger someone wrote for a good time call and my uh call and my number on the playground slide people would call a couple times a week they would laugh and hang up it started to get annoying so i went to the playground to cover it up someone saw me doing it and called the cops saying that i was vandalizing the playground i had to explain to the, <laughs> i had to explain to the cop that I was removing my number so people would stop calling me. Jeez. 301, you hear me? Yeah, hi. Oh, wow. Frankie, you hear me? Yeah, oh, yeah, I hear, I hear you. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you great. Do you hear me now? Yes, I do. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Go right ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. I was just uh, calling in to uh, test your wine, and it sounds like it worked. <laughs> you did. Thank you so much. I needed the help. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy, so there you have it. I was probably getting trolled, which is, no, which no, is, no, no. Which is all fine. No, um, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I was watching the news, and uh, apparently it's kind of a big deal. I mean, uh, Sky News was saying that the British RAF was involved in shooting down the air, uh, shooting down the drone. Oh yeah, oh. Appar apparently they they wouldn't be able to they wouldn't have been able to get all of them. The Iron Dome alone would not have been able to get them all if it weren't for the help of at least the uh, the, the the British Air Force. Right, and the uh, Americans were involved shooting at intercepting too. So, so I guess a lot of the uh, speculation is. Does it? Does Iran call it a day now? Said, "Hey, we made our point. We retaliated. That's it." Or does it escalate? Uh, based on these these reports, um, it seemed like Iran was trying to say, "Okay, we're all good now because of what happened in Damascus. We're all good. We got it out of our system, and uh, that's all." And then, of course, over the last. Two or so hours. There was um, there's just a lot of things that are out there saying that the IDF is planning something very very big. I don't know why this would be. And thank you for the call and bringing. In, like I said, you want to talk about what's actually going on or what we're being presented with? It doesn't matter. It's all dangerous for us. We're not getting cut in on the on the on the benefit of whatever that whatever the end game is here. That's that's not for us to enjoy. But. Um, but yeah, how how could you with all of the the saber rattling and all the the games of chicken that have been played with Iran over the years? Obviously, there was just a real deep, deep urge, deep within the loins of the uh, the shadow state, the McCain crowds. That's on the state side, and then of course everywhere else. How could you squander an opportunity like this? Yeah, that headline on, on Drudge at the top in the corner was uh, was right. I mean, this is unprecedented only because you have a direct, it's usually all proxy stuff. Now we're talking about missiles from Iran. You know, it's actually, it's like a a state response and not a, a, a proxy like Hezbollah or whatever the hell, you know? So you think about how badly they've wanted this war for so long, they meaning the collective bunch of them, um, why you would squander that by letting that go away? So we'll see what happens. See what happens. Blue Monster Prep. <laughs> That's most beast. You know, to having a business where something goes wrong in the world and suddenly you get uh, people knocking on your door. All right, let's see here. Um, 405, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, 
Frank. Hey, what's I'm sorry. I told your call. I mean, I missed you the first time. I couldn't, you couldn't hear me. I okay. don't know why. All right. It's okay. Go ahead. Um, well, the first thing I wanted to say is that no incumbent president has ever lost. Is that not true? So are we in wartime? So don't we think that there's something fishy to trying to start a war at the time that we're having an election? Yeah, I mean, you can say that. Does it does it give it does that uh, give because I, I remember with uh, I remember my very juvenile thinking about George Bush in 2004. You know, that was the uh, that was the first time I ever I ever voted because I, I had just it was my it was the first election that happened after I graduated high school. And, uh, and of course, you know, 9-11 was in my junior year. So 2004, I'm saying to myself, well, we, you know, I, I, I'm voting for Bush because, you know, I'm giving him a chance to finish the job. Yeah. Like 16 years later, finish the job. What the hell? Yeah, exactly. You know, oh so my goodness. I don't know. I wasn't, sadly. He, uh, and I still thought. It, it doesn't seem like the same kind of world, though, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if Biden enjoys that bump or if they just want to have that precedent there while, of course, they go ahead and force whatever outcome they want in the meantime. So that, that's just really, um, I don't know, it, it, anything just to like explain. The, well, it's an interesting fact. Also, by the way, that the old school social media, I had, well, grew up having what was called a party line, by the way. Um so you picked up the phone and your neighbors would be talking and you'd be like, um, I need to make a call. Can you get off the phone? Because we all had the same line. And so if anything happened around our house, everybody just picked up the phone and started talking to each other. Wait a second. But this this was something that you guys had just for you or this was a like a public public no, utility? Was, we're rural and we're Oklahoma. We were in the middle of nowhere. And so everybody on my like mile, well, it was probably several mile sections had the party line so we were all in the same line so if you picked up and somebody was talking you just had to put the phone down and wait on them to quit you know quit or finish or whatever but you can pick up a phone at any time and listen to other people talking and you just have to be on that line knowing that you you're you, you could be heard so just watch what you say absolutely yes and my we lived by my grandparents so when my mom was talking to like her sisters they could just totally pick up and hear all of their marital issues whatever yeah it was that wow i know i know it was bad i mean that i remember wanting to call my friends of course everybody was long distance at the time because i went to school in a different town but the party line you'd have to wait for you know miss mills down the road to finish her conversation with her mother before you could actually make the phone yeah, call. yeah but could you could you at any time could you be her if you picked up the phone and you said miss you mills talk. you can say miss mills could i and, and she would hear you like, if there was a yes, there was a family emergency. You say, Miss Mills, can you can you put the phone up because I need to call the hospital. My daughter, you right. know, got hit by or whatever. Okay. Well, it, it was crazy. At least there was that. That, but that is crazy. And that was just <laughs> for like a, a you said like at least a mile or so. Everybody within yeah, that was, radius. Yeah, it was a big section of all of our all of our phones were on the same line. Oh so man, you had to turn. There must be some incredible stories. There must be some incredible party line stories. I hope if anybody out there has a party line story, anything like that, please call in with it. Thank you for the call, by the way. Oh, oh by the way, Frank. Yeah. I'm Piper's mom, the wrestler. Oh, congratulations. Yes. So I just wanted to say, first time call, uh, first time I've gotten through, but thanks for the emails and for showing her story because. I'm pretty proud. Oh, you should be. You should be very, very proud. And uh, and how's everything going? Uh, she's back to summer workouts and eating right, doing all the things. But she took a couple of weeks off to eat a bunch of junk and hang out for a minute. And now they're doing freestyle. So good. She's getting ready for next. Any more wins? Uh, we haven't done any tournaments yet because they wanted to wait a couple months and let everybody kind of get into like have a rest. Mm -hmm. And so we'll start in may well i'm so happy for you guys and uh, send my best to her i will do it thank you thank you you guys remember that story right wonderful got her first win rolled right over on on the mat and started praying really great awesome story good so party line stories 
Now, is the, the Joe Biden thing again? I don't know. Joe Biden is not a guy. And again, I, this is not a time where I don't think anything is really legitimate anymore or very little is. I don't know if he would actually um, benefit from that wartime boost only because this war represents yet another thing that has gone wrong on his watch, his watch, you know. I think that I think that that uh, there's no real way to to legitimately boost numbers anymore. I think I think that it's possible you can take precedent of hey an incumbent in wartime usually gets that boost. Usually they want to stick with it. You don't want to change a management in the middle of a really really uh, 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 sticky situation. But it could just be like everything else, like with the polls, how fake they are just to be able to project dominance where there is none because they plan on getting their way one way or another. And if as long as they have something to actually like support the alibi, you know, something to, to support a predestined conclusion, like, oh, there was precedent with history. Oh, they've been trending this way the entire time over here. Oh, they're winning with this demographic and that demographic, you know. So I, I, I don't know. Um, obviously the brand the biden brand is is uh, is expiring quickly what the hell's being built up in the middle east and eastern europe is going to survive the biden name very very uh, in, in big ways big ways all right let's see here 914-200-0269 we got a couple 708 you're on the air who's this hey frank i want to Slap your butt cheeks. <laughs> oh, well, we heard that from so and so on Friday, and blah, 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 blah. Is, is that all you wanted to do? That, that's it, man. Okay, well, thanks for calling in, my friend. There you go. I got my, my butt cheeks slapped. Lauren's in the other room. She's probably getting uh, jealous now. All right, let's see. <laughs> Oh, just keeps getting better. Keeps getting better. All right, let's see here. Let's see here. Another one with the um, writing on the bathroom wall. Unscott said, I saw a number scratch on the table at the bar and said something like, call Mike. He's been really mean. So I sent Mike a text message telling him to be nicer, and in response, he sent me back several angry who the hell is this texts over the next few days. He is really mean. <laughs> oh, why would you do that to people? Who is this? That's funny to me because uh, my friend, um, he used to he used to prank his own uncle. Because his uncle was some kind of a character, and but he was a little unstable or something. That's the way he would tell us that he's just got problems, but and he's kind of a prick to him. So every once in a while, he liked to prank his uncle, and he would just call him up and you know say say things almost like mafia related or something like that, and or or say something about well, so, something juvenile, and he would he he showed me. <laughs> He showed me some of the recordings of these calls, and the uncle would always re initially respond in the same way. He'd say, who is this? Who is this? And then it would just get, he'd just get irate, irate after that. So I don't know. I don't know. I've heard, some, I've heard some prank phone calls done over the years that were just not good. They caused far more damage than they did uh, create fun. 727, you're on the air. Go ahead. We're talking about anything. I'm on air. Yes. Okay, hey. Yay. Frank? Yeah. Oh man, I just wanted to say I I've been I've been watching your show for a year. You're you're a man. Keep it up. Keep it up. Well, who's this? Oh well, first of all, turn off the show in the background so I don't go nuts. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And then and then what's your name? Deborah. Okay, well Deborah, thank you for calling in. And I've I, never called in before. Okay. Well, do you, you got to turn off the, sh the show in the background. No, I, I don't want to be on the air. You're already on the air. Oh, I am. Okay. Well, listen, Deborah, it's been great to hear from you. I'm glad that you've been enjoying yourself this past year, and I hope that we have many more to come. Yeah, I love you, love you, love you guys. Okay. Thank Bye. you, Deborah. Have a good one. Deborah's having a good time tonight. I had a peach... 
what is it? A spiced peach martini? What was it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just it was one of those nights where I was the, the cocktail menu came out. I said, What do you think? What's good? I said, try this spiced peach martini thing. I said, okay. Oh no, pear. No peach. I don't know what the fuck it was. I think it was a pear. One of those one of those pea fruits. All right, 860, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Frank, it's Valski. Hey, Val, how you doing? Good. I just have a party line story for Oh, you. wow, okay, so this is great. Go ahead. When I was a kid, we used to go to Aunt Betty's cabin in rural Massachusetts, so this was like the 70s. And, yeah, if somebody wanted to call us, we would have to wait until the phone rang four times before we were picking it up because that would ensure that the call was really for us. If it only rang three times, that was the next neighbor up the street, two times, et cetera, et cetera. Oh. But, yeah, you could at any point in time just pick up the phone, and if you weren't, I don't even remember if there was a dial tone. Um, but, yeah, you picked up the phone, and sometimes people were already just talking and using the phone, so, you know, uh, mom or dad would just say, oh, hang it up. Wait till they're done before you make that phone call. See, it just seems like a public restroom kind of a situation. <laughs> it, it's, it was, again, because it was rural. I mean, we were just up there. Is that because at the, t- uh, at the time, you know, it, it, it is a, uh, no. What years are we talking about here? Are we talking about a time where you you needed people there actually, you know, taking in, uh, you know, making the connections manually as far as like, you know, engineers uh, and stuff? Or it was like a regular, as I recall, it was just a regular phone on the wall. Um, you know, but but as far line. as far as the operator goes, was there? Is it because they didn't they didn't want they didn't have the resources to actually put in? a system for a rural area, so they're just going to give you guys a party line to have something? I don't really remember. Okay. Um, Because, again, I was only, like, you know, 10 years old. But I remember every time you heard the phone ring, it was the room room would go silent, and we'd go, one, two. Like, we had to wait for the fourth ring before we'd go, okay, I'll pick it up. (laughs) Wow. It was just such an oddity compared to living at home. But it worked. That that's that I, I again. Do you have any? I need I need to have some. There has to be had some drama stories here. There has to be some. Uh, you know, we weren't there often enough. Yeah. You know, we were. This was just we were just visiting for the week. I mean, it was a cabin, so it wasn't like people lived there year round. Right. It was just summertime, so there was a phone, but it was you know not particularly sophisticated. It was rural. Well, that that's a. It's still. Thank you for helping. Fill this in a little bit here, Val, because I I like this. And and, and the first thing that just popped up for me now there too is it's, it just feels like a public restroom. Like oh, don't okay, get out, <laughs> get out. Wait until they finish. Wait until they finish. Then you, then you yep. guys go back in. Don't listen to yep. them when you're in the next stall. Don't listen to them. Oh yep. man. Okay. Well, thanks for the call. Okay. Good night. There you go. Party line. There had to have been some major drama on that. You know, picking up and they're kind of like taking a chance at little local gossip. Which is you would think that people would keep themselves in check, but I, knowing people, no, no, there's probably way too much said on that line, way too much. Nine one four, two hundred o two six nine, uh, two five zero. You're on the air. Go ahead. Frank, can you hear me? Yes. Who's this? This is Mike. Mike. Well, how are you, Mike? Are we on speakerphone or something? If I'll get you off yeah, let's get that off. Can you hear me now? Yeah, a lot better. Okay, go right ahead, Mike. That's good. Uh, I got a story for it's not party line, but it's a uh, scanner. Remember the police scanners back in the early nineties? Hell, yeah. Hell yeah, I got one right over here. My uh, mom got a code from her cousin that uh, set up all the cordless phones in the area. Oh. So she's sitting there in her throne on her bathroom, listening to the neighbors talking about. Uh, to grow up in the cow crawl space, or they're swinging. Yeah, and... can we try it out again, please? Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm at work. Um, yeah, so yeah, she heard all sorts of crazy stories in the uh, from the cordless phones of different neighbors and stuff. Wow, uh, yeah, I mean, so picking it's... up the codes and just 
But you know who? You get so police who, or you get Karen next door. Wait a second, but who gave her these codes? That that's that's kind of messed up. Her cousin. I don't know where he got them from, but he's just one of those guys that always either had your code for your cable box or that kind of stuff, and he just had these codes for the scanner. Dude, you know you're bringing something up for me here that I just completely forgot. It's another core memory: picking up other people's phone calls. You know, I, especially on uh, on old cell phones or even the CB radios and stuff like that. I don't pick up. I haven't heard another person's phone call come through, uh, you know, kind of like a bleed over just by accident in forever. Maybe that's just because we don't have the cordless phones around the house. I don't know if it still happens for some of you out there with cordless phones, but it, it, that just feel I feel like I have not had that experience in decades at this point. Yeah, I need to ask her again. She has some great stories or something I'm sure I forgot. <laughs> Wow. wow. So, so what kind of drama did she hear? Uh, a grow up in the basement of the next door neighbor's house. Oh, oh a grow? Like marijuana? Uh, yeah, they were growing marijuana in the basement. This was probably in 96, 97. Okay. So way before legalization. I'm in Canada, so we got legal now. But uh, huh. yeah, and uh, the other neighbors across the way were swingers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so it was pretty juicy sometimes. <laughs> oh, jeez. Your mother starts writing erotica books. Just the oh dear, just just writing fan fiction because she's getting all these stories from everybody's lot. Wow, tales from the dead end street. <laughs> Ta- seriously, tales from a tales from a dead end. That would be a wonderful anthology of overheard conversations. All right, Frankie. All right, take care. I have to say, be well. There you yeah, go. Have a good night. You too, man. There you go. I, I, see, I like that. I like those concepts. I hear I hear book titles all the time. Book titles and themes all the time. I can't. I just can't. Uh, can't put it all together. At least not for now. I've done it before. Did the um, the short stories and something that was novel length. So one day there will be time. All right. All right. Let's keep it going. Uh, Two oh four. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Frank. It's Star calling. Hey, Star. How are you? I'm terrific. Now everybody, just, this is this uh, is back from this is my watching, friend Star. Everybody, uh, this is the Star that told me about the, uh, the 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 actual the hotline. So tell us everybody about your particular hotline because this looks like it's uh, everybody had their own regional thing. It seems right, exactly. But when I was a kid, it was called actually called the hotline, and it was um, it was pretty interesting because it was a busy signal. And everyone seemed to know the number. It was one particular number you called, and it was busy. And everybody shouted over the busy signal their phone number. Then once the person on the other end got your number, they yelled it back to you. And then you hung up the phone, and then they called you. Wait, so wait, wait. If you got your number, you threw your number out there, they would yell it back to you yeah. as like almost like what? Like a confirmation that they heard it? Yes. Okay, now, exactly. it, 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 would it be unheard of that m- multiple people call you? Oh, no, no, absolutely not. But then they would get a busy signal because you tell me talk to someone else. That's right. We were talking about busy but signals. You had, yes, because, see, this wasn't just any busy signal. It had to be the hotline busy signal that you called in, and everyone just shouted their numbers there. And uh, it worked. Because a couple of times, my friend, my sister, and I did meet some people from there. I mean, I'm looking back on it. I see now that it was hella dangerous. But, you know, back in the day, it was... A lot less dangerous back then, you can say. I mean, obviously, Mm -hmm. obviously it's always... um, You're always just, you know, rolling the dice with something like that when you're going into something, a social situation, blind. But, uh, we, I mean, it's a completely different world. Yes. Yes, that's very, very true. But so, yeah, it was quite bizarre. Wow. And uh, that's when I found that article because you and I had discussed it on my podcast. So I found that article, sent it to you. But I see that that's, that was the, where was that from? Detroit? Yeah, this was Detroit. That article, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I guess that was their version of it called the pipeline. Looks like it was called the beep line different places had their own version of it but yeah oh yeah yeah here's somebody somebody says uh radio head says it seems to me during the mid to late 60s there was a similar thing going on in southwest michigan we called it beep line 
You dial a certain a number, line. you get a rapid beeping sound, and yell between beeps. A buddy of mine got exactly. quite a few good dates from the old beep line. <laughs> wow. Right? Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We called it the hotline. They, I guess they called it the beep line, but it's all basically the same thing. It was the early social media. Wow. Well, listen, uh, Star, before you go, let everybody know how, how they can listen to your podcast. Oh, uh, at the Star Lordis channel slash Hope for Humanity. You can go on there. See, uh, Frank came on my show and we had a nice little chat. It was a lot of fun. And you were on a hot pink phone. <laughs> I was it. Where, where is it? Here it is. This is my uh, it's my work phone over here. <laughs> if you know whenever oh, i have to yeah. whenever i have to actually be <laughs> right. on on a phone call i plug this into my iphone yeah. so i don't have that uh you know that microwave right up against my brain and uh, i exactly. got the, my first one was blue but this is the, the best one i can find so i got the pink one and i knew aurora would like it now she steals it all the time and now it's just like a, it's a prop and it's also uh really really valuable thank you for calling in star yeah, it's very awesome. Oh, by the way, Frank, have you seen the movie Civil War yet? No, but I've read several reviews on it that were uh, that were all good. Yes, we just came back from it. An amazing, amazing film. Very violent, uh, very realistic, but definitely worth a watch. When you say when you say realistic, is it just because of uh, how stripped of you know like uh, Michael Bay kind of theatrics it was, or is it because of um, it's just because of the way that it may it may actually be a reasonable trajectory for us. Uh, I, I would say both. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. When when you're sitting there, it feels like you're right in the middle of an actual war. Like very realistic. It's incredible. Very very violent, but really really good film. So. Thank, well. Okay, Frank. I'll let you get. I'll let you get on with your show and. Uh, Thanks for taking the call. Oh, I we'll appreciate you. Soon. Well, thank thank you for donating, okay. uh, helping me, you know, produce this uh, this topic. Thank you for it. Yes. All right. No problem. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. There you go. Um, I I had seen a couple of things about Civil War, but I didn't know if that was on like uh, Amazon or something like that. You listen to this one. When I was a kid, the babysitter we had one year while my grandmother was on vacation and wasn't available to watch us, was a H dash 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 wonderful wham fan? What the hell does that mean? Does anybody know what the hell that means? H wonderful wham fan. H asterisk 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 wonderful W-A-M-M fan. What the hell does that mean? I don't know. Anyway, it was four years after Casey Kasem had an R and B leaning uh, R and B leaning top forty show there. Oh, I guess it's a radio station, but I w I wonder what the H's were. I thought it was like bleeping something out. Uh, his first top forty gig, according to Casey, they were popular with all young demographic groups. They had a request line C E nine one four two zero. It was almost always busy. She showed us how it was done. You could yell your phone number out uh, number nine by number in between the busy tones. Then you can call the number you heard if you wanted to. Kind of a crapshoot. It was the only way. Uh, it was the only way too young for that kind of fun. I still am. That's crazy. So even just little tiny things there too. That sounds like a radio station. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't, but there you have it. All right, 914-200-0269. Uh, let's take a really quick break. When we come back, more of your calls. Don't go anywhere. You've got to have the will to accept the truth and buck the system and the group collective. Do that, and you'll earn your way to the next level. This is the Info War. tell you that as a result of your many, many letters, Neil LeVang made a recording of Ghost Riders in the Sky. It has just been released, so we're going to ask Neil to play his recording arrangement. <laughs> Thank you. 
so nice in here. Got a little breeze. Got a little breeze coming from above. Crack this open too. Oh, come on, you son of a bitch. Very nice. Okay. It's 11.41 p.m. We're going to be going till midnight. So more of your calls is warranted. 914-200-0269. Is it World War III? Is it time to bring in the tomato plants for real? What are we being served up? And for what purpose? Big picture, big picture, big picture. All right. Numbers scratched along the bathroom wall. Let's see here. I texted uh, one, one number, a picture of a cucumber because that's what the note said. They sent me back cabbage. Okay. Here's another one. In high school, this is from Mad Daxler. In high school, I messaged one number on the bathroom wall that was, on, oh, the one number that was on the back seat of a bus. That was going through a town that was 30 minutes drive from my town. I texted, who is this? Your number is on the back seat of this city bus. And they replied, Greg. I told my classmate about it. And later, uh, later on that week, since his name was also Greg. Sure enough, he holds out his phone with a text message from me in there. Okay, well, that makes a lot more sense. And it's it's not as high I mean, it's, it's the, the prob the probability of that is, you know, the odds are pretty. Uh, they're not too slim, you know. If they're all using the same, the same buses, the same school, I don't know. That circuit could be saturated. So, but that that is pretty crazy. Somebody replied, "Are you getting married?" All right, let's see here. Nine one four two hundred oh two six nine. Um. In light of this, in high school, one of my friends got a text from a wrong number. They proceeded to spend the entire weekend messing with the person on the other side of the line, but eventually felt bad because he came off as a nice guy. So they relaxed a little bit, but come Monday, they're laughing and showing it to their friends. I thought it was a little funny, so I started reading the text. I thought, wow, this guy sounds super familiar. Then I kept reading and I looked at the number. It was my dad's number, <laughs> which I found hilarious. I recognize the way that he sent his text messages, mostly because he uses talk to text, so it sounds similar to the way he speaks, which is unique in text messages. Wow. There's all you. Can you imagine that realizing that your friends are all messing with your father? Well, like in text message? God forbid. Let's see here. 931, go ahead. Hey, Hold I've on. Got a telemarketer story. A telem yeah. Oh, telemarketer story. Yes, go ahead, please. So it was 2007-ish. Uh, uh, there was a comedian that would, that was what he based his, his stick on, the telemarketer. So uh, moving, newborn, newborn baby moving into a new house, I slipped the disc in my back. No. So I had some time off. And just sitting there, actually a landline, they called me, and it was a uh, newspaper. And I answered the phone. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so thankful you called. My wife left for work. Uh, my my daughter, it's a poopy diaper. I've never done this before. Can you help me? And it was a man on the phone. He's, no, no, I can't. I was like, is there anyone there that can help me? Like, oh, let me put you on hold. Give me a second. So I waited for like 30 seconds, and this woman got on the phone. She's like, oh, my God, sir, okay, I know your situation. Uh, I'm here to help you through it. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. And she's sitting there talking to me and like, okay, the diaper has got folds on the sides. You know, you, you unfold them, pull it off. I'm like, there's poop everywhere. I've got it on me. I can't touch my daughter. What do I do? Sir, don't, don't panic. Calm down. And I'm just laughing. My friend's yeah. next to me and we're just both dying laughing, trying to maintain. <laughs> okay. Do you have baby wipes? Yes. Yes. Clean your hands. Dude, you got, you have to buy, evaluate. you have to, what, what were they selling? It was newspapers. You have to. You, you, a, I hope you bought something from them after that. Uh, I'll get to that in the end. Okay. Go ahead. And so I'm, I'm still going along with it. Okay, ma'am, I clean my hands. 
there's poop on her everywhere. She's like, okay, just make sure everything you see, clean it all off. I'm like, okay, I've done this. White, you're wiping from She's front like, okay. to wipe, wipe from front to back. Exactly, exactly. And I'm like, okay, I got the new diaper on, the tabs on the side. I'm like, so th- I'm th- so thankful for you. Thank you so much. And I'm like, okay, just let me compose myself. And I, I took a few breaths. And I'm like, okay, ma'am, what are you selling? And they're like, oh, we're with the local. I'm not, not interested. And I hung up oh, on her. Oh, <laughs> that's dude. That's cruel. That's cold. I know. That's cold. I, I would. I know. At, and at that point, even if I knew, okay, you know what? I'm gonna. I, I hate telemarketers, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna just drag these people for a little while. <laughs> after she committed to that, after they committed to that, like that was they. That, that was they thought that there was a human being in need. I would have said, okay, listen, do you at least have a weekend delivery? I'll just take a weekend delivery. <laughs> just. So, Damn, bro, that was cold. No, I've and I've actually like it was a cool moment. It was a funny story, but yeah, I, I do feel <laughs> bad about it in hindsight. I, I definitely do. Well, well, no mat, no doubt. Uh, that woman definitely still remembers that. So I hope so. Yeah, because I, I tell that story often, and I hope she's well too. Well, thanks for the call. This was a good one. Hey, well, just say so you no, know, Ruben in Tennessee, and I'm gay. <laughs> I would have at least gotten a a weekend delivery. I would have at least gotten a weekend delivery. So, uh, man, oh, man, that's just. uh... Okay, let's see. (laughs) 914-200-0269. What's going on in, in the chat room? I see Lynn Winters in the D Live. I see Bill Cooper in the Twitch. Misfit in the Twitch as well. Um, telemarketers, though, says Absalom. It's not very uh, often I get to actually just look into the chat room and gaze upon you all. So that's why I say I think I'm just going to do a little bit of an impromptu night. Just go up and take some calls. And um, yeah. Oh, I'm. Just so happy that the last caller was gay. All right, so let's see here. The the first one up, I don't. I just saw this here too. Look from the Telegraph. The West must remember how to fight. It may already be too late. Uh, we, you got to be kidding me. The West must fr- remember how to fight. We have been taught to give up. Taught to give up. The world is only in in the in the shape it is. It's in right now because we have been taught to give up. We have been taught to deprioritize ourselves and our our best interests. So that's just incredible. Now they're saying we have to remember how to fight because Iran and Russia are coming after us. Just incredible. 480, you're on the air. Give me something. Hey, Frank, it's Rosie. Hey, Rosie, how you been? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm just... You know me. I'm over here. I'm yeah. just chilling. Okay, I have a beaver story and also a um like another line story. I'll start with the other line. My parents put in a second line, like you said last night, because the internet would tie up, dial up would tie up the um you know, the main line. So I would call my friends and they would call me on the second line and I didn't know it, but my parents could hear my conversation. Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. So it was in high school. Well, yeah, because we were way, we weren't drinking in grade school, but somebody was organizing like a desert party and I was trying, I was like point person to try to get a keg. (laughs) And I don't know, I was like 16, 17. And apparently my parents heard it. But I somehow got out of it. Well, my mom asked me, she's like, what is this about a keg? What's, what's, what are you doing? What's going on? And I'm like, oh my God, how the hell did she find out? Because I knew she wasn't at my door because I knew she, I knew I was whispering. Anyway, I got out of it somehow. No. They totally believed I was like 
a little <laughs> little angel. <laughs> oh yeah, well they, now they now they knew. Now they can yeah. now they knew they they picked up the scent of the rat tail you had grown. You're absolutely just, you're just yeah. another I never I never like sneaked out though because they had alarms. <laughs> That's the only reason why. <laughs> so there you go. You thought it was a secure line. That uh, that that almost made it an anti-social uh, media moment where you would, you probably wouldn't have been able to go out that night. So what's the other thing you got for us now? So I had a couple beepers in high school, mm. and the the first kind was like the first gen where you just receive a number. You know, you would whatever, like you would do all the funny stuff like hello or boobs or whatever. But then that one was stolen. So I got a fancier, quote unquote, beeper where it was more text. But I don't think, I don't remember ever anyone sending me messages like a text message, but I did sign up for weather alerts. So in high school, I would pretend that I was getting beeps like, you know, beeper messages from my boyfriends in college, but they were really just <laughs> weather alerts. <laughs> oh, see, you, you know, you, you, what you just brought up for me is, first of all, the beepers. I'm trying to think of the ones that I had. I started looking around for the ones I had, and it was a big, like, the one, the first one I had from Motorola was like a, a VCR. And yeah, they were huge. Do you still remember your beeper number? No, not at all. I don't either, but I, well, you know what I had? I had a really cool thing. I think it cost my mother a little extra, but she she insisted on it. My beeper number was a 1-800 number. So so back then, no matter what the hell it was, you could always reach me. You can always get a message to me or some kind of a signal, even if you were at a pay phone without a quarter. So Oh, that's I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, it was a little extra money a month. Like, usually people would have just a regular phone number or something like that. But my beeper number was, it was tied to a 1-800 or a 1888. So you can you can always get me a message even if you were at a, um, a you know, a, a pay phone. And pay phones were still very relevant parts of our lives. So it was, yeah. uh, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. I like that. That's what we used to do. We would go to Denny's smoke cigarettes obviously right eat huge amounts of food and then just go to the pay phone drop quarters in and start paging our friends that's what we would do see yeah if anyway if your friends were, if your friends were me rosie you wouldn't have needed those quarters i know that's so crazy i honestly didn't even know that existed so that's cool <laughs> well, that's I, it, it doesn't matter now <laughs> it's yeah, it doesn't. so but many years i miss it oh me well too. Me too. Well, thank you okay. for calling in with that, Rosie. I'm always glad when people from the Gilded jump into the pool with me over here. I'm happy to join the pool. In the jacuzzi. Take care, Rosie. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Bye. See ya. Pagers. The pager, the uh, the numerical uh, languages there and all that stuff, the signs and codes. There's plenty of, um, plenty of drama popped up with that too. All right. We got about six minutes left. Let's take a call. Five zero, oh no, four zero two. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Frank. Uh, this is Brian Jack Holder from Council Bluffs, Iowa. How are good, you doing? Tonight? Good to have you on, sir. I uh, just uh, went and saw that uh, Civil War movie uh, this evening, and it was uh, a wonderful uh, uh, produced film. Uh, you know, it uh, it didn't take sides. It just warns us of uh, what uh, could happen. And this is pale in comparison to reality if things broke down right and you know i think that was one of the things i kept uh seeing popping up in all of the reviews uh both on just you know uh movie movie critique sites and everything else is that it was you'd expect something like this to have a heavy slant toward one side or the other being the good side and you know who you know who you're being warned about in more so in particular than 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 the other one faction over the other, but that it actually was pretty um, pretty unbiased for the most part. Uh, until I see it, I won't know. But that's I've seen that pop up in, in the reviews before. Oh yeah, I won't give you any spoilers, but I I'm sort of an amateur vexologist, and uh, the flag of the uh, 
the rebel forces has two stars on it. So it's like the Texas flag, but with two stars. And they should have put the California bear up there if they were uh, going to be true to Texas and California joining forces. That's what they did? No, they just had two stars on the flag. Oh, okay. Of the, yeah, of the Western forces. Got so. you. Got you. But uh, there were some moments there that were uh, extremely visceral. Uh, you know, the characters are sort of one-dimensional because uh, it's less than two hours long. So you have to infer a lot from the backstories. But uh, it was a well-made film. It should uh, wake people up, but they're sort of desensitizing everybody to whatever uh, nefarious plans they have in their uh, to-do list. So. Well, well, there's there's new to-dos thrown at, thrown at us every day now. Every day. So when I, oh, when they I want said, us in a constant state of fear and anxiety and depression. That's, uh, that's what they want. But, uh, hey, we have to be uh, cheerful and uh, smile at our oppressors and uh, use the First Amendment just like you are doing. So, Well, you are out there pounding the pavement, very, very real-time uh, stuff, sir, trying to serve your community. And you have been, uh, you know, you've been going toe to toe with it yourself. And I always love your updates. And and thank you so much for calling in again, Mr. Holder. Well, thank you, Frank. And if you can ever make it out to the uh, College World Series uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, it's a wonderful event they have every June. Uh, and I got a ticket for you. Oh, so. dude, I would love that. I usually end up watching at least one or two games. Or like maybe the, uh, the wait wait no no wait. do they do a series or is this is it uh, yeah is they it? do a series eight teams from the different regionals show up and it's a double elimination tournament so okay the women's have their softball in Oklahoma City a few weeks earlier double elimination yeah so then I yep. u- I'm usually watching the, uh, the 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 decision game the decider game which I guess is game one uh, it's a, yeah it's a best of three but they've scheduled it to uh, coincide with uh, Father's Day now. So it's nice that all the, uh, they have the Father's Day uh, Sunday games. So it's, I've been fortunate enough to take my pop and my son there. So it's a wonderful event for the community. But during COVID, they canceled it and uh, they lost $100 million, the uh, Omaha metro area. $100 million for the College World Series, huh? Yeah, and the Iowa State Fair, they lost $100 million during COVID because wow. they didn't have the state fair. So now I, I know, I know compared to something like the world cup where you're talking about bringing in billions, uh, I did, oh, I, yeah. I, I would have never thought that the college world series was, was producing that much, but I guess yeah, so I, all the, the revenue from the uh, people that come in for the series. Yeah. So there's people that follow their teams from, uh, especially the, uh, the South. Uh, I've met some wonderful people that are lifelong friends quarter of a century ago at the college world series and they're from louisiana well thank you for sharing that i learned a little something tonight and uh, it's always good to hear from you sir yeah and one other thing you know i wouldn't fight my brothers my friends from louisiana (laughs) if they ever uh start another one of these civil conflicts so well, I'm I gotta, a peacemaker. I, I got to why I can I can tell. I know we have you. We have a couple other, and thank you for the call, uh, sir. We have we have Jack. We've got our other friend from Detroit who's been out there trying to get um, taxes removed, and uh, you know, obviously, still in the petitioning pro- uh, process and and getting a little bit of flack. But there's a lot of people out there doing their thing. Yeah, we have to keep good humor, and we have to stay purposeful. Because, I mean, look, look, this is the purpose otherwise. All right, uh, one or two more things before we go. Here is a last entry from one of our um, people who have gotten in touch with the numbers on the bathroom wall. Uh, Quillamote says, I found a business card in a phone booth printed uh, cryptically with, quote, if you don't call, you'll never know. (laughs) <laughs> and a phone number. People are so mysterious, aren't they? Since I had time left on the phone card, I called, and now I know. It was a pseudo-religious self-help cult trying to recruit people to seminars at their ranch in New Mexico. Jeffrey Epstein? Somewhere with promises of finding a new spiritual family. No thanks. Last thing I need now is more family. Wowee. 
The message, really, yeah, somebody said the message is pretty irresistible. It would make any curious-minded being call. That would be interesting. If you don't call, you'll never know. You're right. You are right. I called the number for a good time, was greeted by a local pizza place. I proceeded to order two pizzas, and at the end of the call, discovered that they didn't deliver to my area. It was a bad time. (laughs) The stall lied. (laughs) My cousin met her boyfriend of three years by calling a number on the bathroom wall. It said something like, for a good time, call, blah, 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 blah. She texted out of curiosity. Apparently, one of his friends had put his name and number down there just to mess with him. He usually had guys sending him (laughs) D-pics and uh, and was considering changing his number. That's, That's rough. That's rough to do to somebody. They texted back and forth for over six months until they met up. Now they live together and they seem happy. Uh, if they ever end up getting married and having kids, they will have quite a story to tell about how they met. And a guy will have to forgive all of his friends. Every D pick would have been worth it. Um, if you found the love of your life along the way. <laughs> buried, buried under all of those, all, all, all those penises, there was my wife. Found her. <laughs> What is this? 852, you're the last one of the night. Who's this? Hung? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? I can. I, I, it says that you're calling from Hello. a very... Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It I'm says... calling from overseas, actually. I know. I know. It says you're calling from a very, very far, uh, very far off land. So how, how you, are you watching right now live in that... <laughs> What time is it where you are? Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't realize it was you because the voice sounds a bit different. Let me just change this ridiculous. Um, there you go. We're now. Oh, yes, uh, my name's Bill. I'm calling from a Southeast Asian uh, tropical island in the Gulf of Thailand. Um, and I've been watching your show for some time. I haven't called into a show for probably 40 years, I think, <clears throat> to a radio show. I just wanted to say hi and thank you for your good work. And well, I've got a story about. Uh, lines from the 80s and the 90s. That, 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 okay, so yeah, I want to hear it, definitely. So you've been watching for some some time. Right now you are in an island in Southeast Asia, you said? Yep. Okay, yep. And, and, and what do you, are you, uh, is this just where you live? Are you out there for business? Or are you on some kind of a mission? Uh, well, I, 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 I had to... Uh, Execute a very sudden leave from the country I was living in at the time because of the COVID uh, fiasco, and I ended up uh, where I am now. So I'm basically living here now. Oh, so so where you were before was um, yeah was thrown into turmoil because of COVID, and it's something that you wanted to escape, and you thought that the, the pastures would be greener over there in Southeast Asia. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Well, and, 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 oh, you're looking at you're looking at mandatory vaccination, forced encampment, government um, uh, arrest and uh, unlawful detention. All those sort of things were happening to my friends, and um, I decided to leave. I had like uh, 12 days to basically to get rid of my entire life, all my possessions, everything I owned. Um, I managed to get on a plane out of the country. And I just landed in where I am now with five boxes, a computer and a guitar. And then it just got worse where I left them and I've been here ever since. You know, but good for you, though, because that is a huge leap of faith right there. And you knew just the fact that you were willing to do that without even it's a lot of work. and It's a huge, huge change in life. But you knew that that was better than uh, than compromising your body and any any other principle you had on the issue. So I mean that says a lot about you as a person. Uh, I, I have to imagine it's either New Zealand or Australia. Um, no, it's it's um, if, if you look at a map and look at the Gulf of uh, Thailand, it's in that region basically. No, I, I mean like <laughs> what, what what you were trying to get away from. I was trying to get away from China. Oh, I've been trying it for thirteen oh. years. Oh, so, oh, okay. And, so, then... um, I had to leave my 
I had to leave my wife behind everything. It was all my entire life just all gone. So you're everything. that's it? You split up with your wife? No, we're still together. She visits uh, every few months. Um, her mum's got uh, had triple shots, so she's got um, myocarditis and pericarditis, and uh, she's uh, eighty something. So um, we have to look after her and uh, sort of just juggle things, see how they go. I hope you don't mind me asking these questions. It's a very interesting. It's just very interesting. You're 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 uh, you're living a life of very far ways away from here, but to I mean, you made some big, big decisions, and it's a, it's a very interesting situation there. So you guys are still still together, but you're just managing things apart for now because she's taking care of her parents. And uh, yeah. how how'd you find this show? Um, I well, I'm a bit of bit of a uh, alternate, um, uh, you know, alternate buff in terms of um, media and all that sort of stuff, and I. Uh, sort of a cliff high and um, Max Egan and uh, Jeff Berwick and a lot of those other types. So I, I heard your show mentioned on one of them and I was looking for something different. And then I got this uh, live stream of some 1950s like or 60s uh, films being played with some cool music. And then this young guy comes on, it looks like he's very cool. And, and then you opened your mouth <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Oh, my God, this person actually is thinking. They they perceive the events and the reality of the world that we live in in a different um, narrow 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 neurological um, viewpoint. And um, I've been listening ever since. Um, in my morning when I wake up, I pump you on. It's taken me two weeks to actually find uh, the time, the actual time and the number and everything to call you. So I. I finally got to call you today, so I'm quite chuffed that I got on. Well, that's good. You said you said you've been so you've only been watching for about a couple of weeks, then. No, no, no. I've been watching for over a year. Oh, okay. Well, it hey, took you, me about two weeks to get on this, this call. <laughs> so, how what what time is it right now where you are? Uh, let me find a device. I think it's about uh, check. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to. Well, just tell me what's on your phone. Eleven oh seven a.m. Oh, okay. So there you go. That's uh, uh, that, that's convenient. That's convenient. Yeah. See. Well, so, well, now I know I can watch it on that uh, the D Live or the Rockfin thing. Um, I figured out how that works. I mean, I've been working in IT for thirty years, and I can't even figure it out. So I'm sure other people have problems, or maybe it's just IT people. <laughs> I it's well listen I hope that this is not the the, uh, the last time you attempt to call in. I know that it's uh, it's a Saturday night. It's a little bit more of a uh you know, it's it's just a late morning show for you over here. I'm sure it'd be a little bit uh, a little bit different when I go live at 7 p.m. New York time, but still uh I th- this was really interesting. And I'd love to ask more questions, but I'm already over my time that I allotted for myself. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate this. Please make a make it a, a habit, or at least at least um, you know write into the show. And thank you for all those wonderful compliments. I'm glad that you're watching. Oh, most appreciate and thank you for all your work, Frank. And uh, you know, keeping the conversation alive and standing up for you know people thinking about who they are and and making their own personal decisions about their own life, their liberty, their health, and what they choose to believe, and not the the bullshit that comes from the uh, governments around the world and the mass mainstream, um, you know, co-opted media outlets. So thank you again. Th- thank you, and you and that's definitely a that's definitely a man who who uh, walks the walk. Seriously, for him to be where he is, for the reasons that he's there, that's really admirable. That's really admirable. The wife stayed behind, but. You know, that's a choice she has to make too, especially if it comes down to: Are you gonna, are you gonna do it or not? Are you gonna, you know, and how many rounds? Okay, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I have for you tonight. Thank you for hanging out with me on a on a Saturday. I hope that we can do it again soon. I will see you on Monday night, no doubt about it. Tomorrow, so probably around eleven o'clock. No, no, I'm sorry, probably around eleven thirty in the morning or so. Eastern time is office hours, Sunday office hours over here. That is, um, that's for sponsors, for monthly sponsors. You can go to quitefrankly.tv. 
Hit the Sponsor Us tab and become a monthly sponsor anywhere. Subscribe, Star, Patreon are great. No matter where the hell you sponsor for what any uh, amount, you're getting Sunday streams. You're getting soon we're going to be streaming band practice for mon Monday uh, for uh, monthly sponsors. Uh, Book Club. Book Club is Monday night. I can't wait for that. This has been going so great with Steve and Jonathan. I hope I can find another book as awesome as The Robe to do with him again one day. You know, that's the crazy thing about book club so far. Every book that we've lined up has been so awesome, so timely, and so fulfilling in whatever way that it, you know, it satisfies uh, the uh, the group that I'm almost like, how the hell am I going to top this? Oh, th th this has this been really a good one. In fact, I actually might go read another chapter or two right now. So can't go too late. That early, the early mass in the morning, but I don't know. I got still some some energy in my bones. Thank you. See you soon. Another f fresh uh, week coming up, and I don't know. Pray for peace. Pray for sanity, and uh, keep your wits about you and your spirits high. I'll see some of you guys tomorrow, and the rest of you on Monday. Good night. I'll catch you on the flip side. Wait a second. Wait. I just want to make sure. I didn't even think to, to look at Super Chats. Oh, Katie Sky says hi. And Stosu says slapping butt cheeks. Whew, I'm glad I did this. Wait. One second. Rumble. There must well, Let me see. Okay, there's a rumble rant from Stephen Ellis. Says Hope Aurora is feeling better. She's feeling great today, Stephen. Thank God. You have no clue how how relieved we are. Actually, many of you do. And it's just one of those things because it, it's new. You know, she's had fevers before, you know, uh, colds. They come and go every once in a while. But the thing uh, that we never saw the, the vomiting of mucus from chest congestion before, where it's not, it's definitely not a stomach thing. And there's no fever, there's no infection, but there's just like, you know, so uh, I learned a lot about that. Happy, happy to know that there's nothing to really worry about or anything like that. Freak out because it's just odd, just odd. But then again, parenthood, I'm sure every phase just gets odder. But not as, not as, uh, doesn't equal the rewarding side of it, obviously, but still, it's been a mucusy week. So I'm um, thank you so much for all the the concern people have shown for Aurora and her her well-being. She's doing great though today and she was so excited. She started jumping around. I feel so good. I feel so good. She's taking deep breaths. You know, her her chest doesn't sound like somebody's taking a bong rip. That's what it was like. It's like you hear the gurgle. I was like, "Damn. She's swimming and shit in there. We got to get her right. They're like, you know, you, you then we you know like clean out her nose just so I would clean out her nose, hoping to trigger a gag reflex. You know, we have one of those. You, you, back in the day, like when my mother would try to clean out my nose, she would use one of those bulbs. You know, you press it down, and then it it's, it extracts whatever the hell's up in there. We actually have one of those things that you just press a button, and it's like a vacuum. And it, we call it the nose sucker. <laughs> it's very clever. It's like whatever we would say. Aurora, we got to clean out your nose. If you're not going to blow it, we got to clean out your nose. I have to go get the nose sucker. And she goes, no, not the nose sucker. <laughs> but if it's chest congestion and we can hear it gurgling around in there like somebody's taking a bong rip, um, sometimes a little bit of nose sucker makes her go, <coughs> and then blow, boom, fucking mucus all over the place. And it's awesome. I feel good for her, you know? Say, oh, that's disgusting. Not if you're a parent, it's not. You are you are cheering mucus on, You uh, hearing that they had a nice big blowout shit makes you feel, I can't tell you how many times, you guys probably don't even know it, that I would go live like in 20, like early 2021, Aurora's still only just a couple of months old or something like that, um, late 2020, she's like three, four, five months old. And it's just like Lauren would tell me, she hasn't gone to the bathroom in a couple of days. I don't know what's going on. And now I'm just like, damn it. She's all backed up. 
you can see her like pushing. So we get some like prune juice or whatever the hell else to move things along. And like I'll be getting to the studio. It'll be like 6.45 p.m. I'm about to go live. 6.45 p.m. And, and uh, Lauren texts me. She goes, oh, boy. And I know what the hell happened. Oh, boy. I said, what? They came? She goes, oh, did it ever. And I, I would go on air feeling like a million bucks. My daughter just took a huge shit. She must feel so good right now. She goes, I cleaned her up. She went, she fell right to sleep. That must have been bothering her, blah, blah, blah. Like, yes. So I probably was on air. How many times did I had a little pep in my step? Like, oh, he's loving life. And I was just, I had shit on the brain. Seriously. <laughs> shit, shit on the brain. That's all it was. I was just happy. That's what your life becomes. <laughs> <laughs> all right well anyway thank you guys and gals i will see you all on monday have a good night and i wait wait is that is that all wait a couple super chats over on gold pill uh sal thank you uh steven and Lori. lovely to see you on a saturday night hope aurora is doing better she is karen hair thank you johnny q says live just stop uh wait wait uh, live just stopping by ML Frank smash that red pill. Thank you. And thank you to Joe Elaine and Sean Joe with that. The night is over and I hope that your weekend is a fantastic one. We will be back soon and, uh, away we go. I'll catch you on the flip side. Quite frankly, is film for a live studio audience. And now our super chatters, starting with Katie Sky. And who's the other one? So sorry. There was just two. Katie Sky and Stostube. How could I have ever forgotten that? Thank you to Stephen Ellis. Thank you to all of our gold pillars. We'll see you on Monday night. Oh, we have some great topics coming up over the next couple of weeks. So. Don't miss it. 7 o'clock. Set your alarms. Good night.